from um, sunny, warm Sydney. Sydney, 17 degrees, they said, but it's probably about 15. Um, I was going to show you guys um, some... Over the years, I've done a fair bit of work for the Good Weekend magazine, years and years. And I remember, uh, sorry, just opening. Can you share my screen? Yeah, share. Okay, I'm just, so, there's, I've done millions over the years, but here's just some of the ones I've done from um, Kyle Sandlands up the top left to your Bob Catter. And what's interesting with that Bob Catter image is one of a great photographer guy in Brisbane, Russell Shakespeare, did some portraits of Bob as well. And Bob always looks like Bob. It's, I know that sounds dumb, but um, he's so he's got such a strong face and um, I think from memory he's got a bit of Afghan blood in him. Lebanese. Lebanese. Okay, close. Uh, then we've got, yeah, dear old John Olson and um, the humble man up the top there, which uh, Midnight Oil, Peter Garrett, was when poor old Peter Garrett came to politics. I don't think he knew what was going on, but it wasn't really what he thought it would be. It's, uh, whew. Poor guy, I feel for him actually. We've got Quade Cooper, which was the football player that was shot in his back garden. I took a black piece of, and I'll zoom in a bit, hang on. Here we go, plus. So yes, it, uh, that one there of Quade Cooper was just on a black background, I remember, in his back garden at uh, uh, Tenerife or somewhere like that in Brisbane. I got, I caught the plane up for the day and I remember it was two strip lights, it was um, three lights, two strip lights on the edge kicking in and um, uh, just a, another three foot octa above him, little three foot light above him de uh, aiming down and uh, they were my three little pro photos that fit a great in a case and uh, took them up there. So good. Kevin Rudd, who was the most boring man in the world to photograph. Oh, I remember this cover of Good Weekend of the uh, actor, director, um, John Bell from the Bell Shakespearean group. And um, he was just standing there and I, said, oh, can someone go and get a newspaper? So we got a newspaper and made him this great hat all on the spot. And I think it worked really well. I'm um, just thinking of some other ones. That was, uh, the one on the far right was a series I did at a coal mine um, in Wollongong. And they were the workers, when they came up, I just picked a fantastic concrete wall and I had a battery operated light flash with a, um, I think that was quite a big softbox, about a four by six or a five, it was a five foot octa shaped one, which was, I love those pictures. And there was a bit of a reflector underneath. And when I shoot those, uh, I will show you how I do some post in a minute. Um, who else we got? See, you can see this background has had a good run. It's where it's been John Bell, the football lady player. Oh, that was an interesting cover, the blonde lady on the left. I never tried to kill him. Um, she went to jail for um, murdering her husband, yeah, because he tried to kill her or something bizarre. Um, what's his name? Um, Turnbull in the studio lit with a couple of Kino, which were fluorescent lights. That's why he's got like vertical strips in his eyes. Um, 
Anyway, so, oh, that, I love this shot on the bottom left, the good cop, Nick Calvis. He was, he should have been our police commissioner for New South Wales, but um, he was uh, overturned because he wasn't of the right political space at the time. But I remember I shot that with just a big uh, two, 2K, like a 2,000 watt spotlight, an old movie light in a chair, which I picked up off the street in council clean up and sprayed silver at the bottom. I love doing all that stuff, bit of bowel burning. So just going to uh, this hard drive, which is, I don't know what's on here. I will go down to G. This hard drive is, um, do you want to just flick to the other, open the camera for a sec? Yep. This hard drive is a eight terabyte LACI, which I use as a, just an interim storage. I've got two servers which I put stuff on, but I dump everything onto there so that I don't have too much sitting on my laptop, so my laptop runs fast. So I'm just looking here. A couple of weeks ago, I had a football player, Curtis Sirenin, in the studio, and we did, um, oh, great, choose a different catalogue. Just what I want to say there, Johnny. Mm. Okay, so that's, I can fix that. I will, what a bummer. Um, why is that, why is that, why is that? I'll have to go to something different. Let me come down to one of the good weekends around here. We'll do the same again. I could do so. Well, I don't, I really shouldn't turn it oh, away. The only other one, uh, oh, um, well, that's okay, that's okay. I'm getting my brain going. I'll just see why that's not doing it. Curtis Sooner. Shared screen is not very sharp. Uh, can you put it on the black one? Okay, sorry. Uh, yes. To go up there. Not that one. Yeah. Yeah. That one? Yeah. Mirror. Yeah. That one? Yeah. Is that is that any better? Those were very low res before Dirk as well. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, the writing isn't sharp. That's okay. The pictures will look sharp. Mm. Okay, let's turn and open these in um it's a bummer because these are in um, my. Just let me plug one other hard drive in. Sorry, that's got them, which is just here. Sorry, guys. I'll just plug this one in and take a few secs. And in the interim, I might just, as uh, John said, uh, I did, here we go, let me get rid of this. Play computers, I want everyone to know that they don't always work great. So, just looking here at uh, oh, I'm sorry guys, I have, I might just come back to that stuff, because what I really was starting to uh, what I wanted to just talk about a little bit too was, um, oh, we're going to do a good weekend. I'm sorry, hang in there. Hang in there and I'll make it work. I oh, know I'm being a ditzy bimbo, boy bimbo. Yeah. Otherwise, I have to put it down in the server, which is a pain in the ass. Okay, I'll just do a quick new, I'll just whack them in our, I'll open another catalog, as you say. Because uh, I don't have any great work on here. Oh, here we go. Ronan. Quibbly. Quibbly. Here we go. So, upgrade that one. Um, this was, is a Good Weekend story that hasn't been published, which is a shame because I really like the photos. Um, now, I'll just go up here to the catalogue. 
I don't know whether you guys can see all this. And you can? Yeah. Okay, tab. I'll just punch it up a bit. So, this guy, his name's Roman Quidlavig. Is it Quidlavig? Yes. He was the uh, head of border security for Australia. And um, he ended up stepping aside because he was having an affair with a 23 year old girl. Um, I think she was 23, am I? Or 24. It was all about board. He and his wife had well and truly split up. And um, anyway, so, which is interesting of this is this was a couple of weeks before I photographed Ben Quilty. I uh, know a couple of weeks, probably a, a week. So I get a call always and they say, would you like to photograph, um, we'd like you to photograph uh, X, whoever it is. And I'll go, okay. So I'm just looking here. These are all on my Hasselblad because I can see the uh, suffixes 3FR. So these were on the Hasselblad. I think that's, is that 100 megapixels? 87, 1160, 100 megapixel back. And they come into the camera, uh, into the software, and I'll just give you a quick look of where we're at as far as, sorry, just get rid of the, oh, it's a bit slow because it goes through the um, black magic. I didn't realize that, of course. So I'll just copy that file, create a virtual copy. Does everyone know how you do that? I'm sure they do. I just hold, hold down the control, button on my Mac, and then I'll click, yeah, create virtual copy. So I've got a virtual copy here. I'm gonna reset this so you guys can see what actually I'm capturing at the time. Just before I do, there's a, oops, I did hit it, previous. On the side, on the right hand side is a, uh, I think that was a, a strip light, which is uh, cutting a little bit across and lighting in here. The back light, top light up here is just basically throwing some shadows on the ground and having a little light patch here. It's a little bit unruly, but I, I say I'm happy to show you the, the raw, raw laws. I'll just go back to, I'll reset it. So that's absolutely neutral what's coming out of my camera and the one previously wasn't like my final grade, I don't know why I was on that, but I'll just show you where I go from here for me. So um, I will go back to, so I'll brighten up my screen. My normal retouch, or retouch, my normal brutal slam is pretty straight and simple. So I capture it with my lighting that I like. I'm just gonna do a quick trim. So to do a crop, as we all know, you hit R. I'll just roughly come down to here. Uh, yeah, I'll just be there, R off. Now, a little bit crooked. So you can go down to the bottom, as you know, I can go and straighten stuff, or I can hit auto and it'll bring that a little straighter. I can see the bottoms out, because you'll see when I go brighter at the bottom. So the bottom's a little bit out. So I'll just square it up quickly before I punch ahead. I'm in trouble. Oh, well done, Johnny. Thank you. That's great. So, I've got it pretty square, um, and I will, so I look at that now, and before I'll, if I whack a heavy grade on there, the first thing I will do is, okay, I'll be brutal. I will slam the clarity. I will drop the highlights. I will, 
open the shadows. I will add some black. Now I'll have a quick look and I'll go, it's too warm. I mean, there's lots of things wrong, but I might cool the diffraction. I really like the floor, this part along here. So I'm gonna go, as we know, we've got a little magic wand at the top and I'll be quick, I'll go effects and I'll zero. If you double click that effects, it zeroes everything. So I wanna make that much more snappy and punchy. So I'm gonna slam the texture, slam the clarity, open the shadows, punch a bit of contrast, lift up the highlights, and a little bit of exposure, and I'll be watch when I run my magic wand across. Wait on, it's not that magic yet. It will, it'll get magic. I'll go again, and I might go hotter in here this time. And I might, I've got a little bit of a, a bleed there. I might pull back as well some saturation on that, because and I'll just punch the blacks a bit more down there and I might push the whites a little bit more. So I just, and I, it's too light in that corner. I mean, this area up here above his head, I haven't addressed, so I'll go a new one. I'll double click again to reset my, I might just start with a little bit of, I can see there's a bit of magenta. I'm just, that's just too hot for me. The same as this is too hot just here. It's making my eye go out. Now I see that white line that shits me too. Excuse my language. Um, so if I want to slam that, I'll go again. I'll restart to it. Oh, sorry. Apple Z. I'll go back. I'll go another new one. And I might. This is such an amazing program. If I come make my... What's in the doodle bigger? Hang on, I'm just going to drag this over for a sec. And I'll come over to this crap on the side here. I will use my, oh, I go auto mask at the bottom often. So it doesn't bleed out. I'll shrink that. I'll take my exposure right down and I'll just quickly nail that a little bit just so my eye doesn't straight away go to it. Of course, and it's sloppy, I'm doing it fast, but uh, zoom out of it now. Now, where am I at? I've got, I'll go a uh, new one again. I do a lot, of course I'm an old guy who did a lot of dark room. I will look at this and I want to darken this down more. Yeah, I can drop in a graduated filter, but it will just make these blacks a bit too heavy. So I'll just come down, I'll increase my bond. I'm moving on. I might just throw a little bit up there. His feet are way too hot, I hate his shoes. I don't even really particularly like this shot much. I don't know why I'm spending so much time on it. Um, and then I will go into, I'll zoom in um, up to his scone. So it's pretty bloody sharp. There's heaps of info in there. So you can see there's a strip in there coming from the right and there's a little low fill is that will catch light there. So because it was border security, I went and got in the barbed wire bunnings. Oh, I might do, I will also often do, zoom out for a sec, zoom out, zoom out. I will often, so I see a fair bit of colour up in here, so I might, as we all know, we've got the colour tuner tweaker here, and I'll often come down, hit that little circle there, gives me my dropper, I go saturation, I go here, and I might pull that down. So, or you can push it up, but it's just unlimited, this bloody program, it's so helpful. Um, anyway, that's a really rough, quick grade. I'll just go back to this first. Oh, I'm a big one of, um, let's just, I'm a big lover 
of the split toner. I'll just show you quickly while I think of it as well. Ah, uh, back out. So I'll do another. I, and I love doing extra um, virtual copies always. I might have half a dozen of them. So I'm going to knock all this way down now. The, uh, what's it called? The saturation. So then I will come down here. So I've got blues punched from before, so I'll zero those. Just hit the color and double click it. So I'll come down, I'm a great lover of this. So I will throw some warmth over the top and I might wanna be a little warmer as opposed to yellowy green. So I might go this way. And then I might wanna, even though I took the blue out, I can come up here and cool my shadows quite a bit. So as I do, you can see it starts to affect the warm here. Now, if I want to, I can add more warmth over the top as well, or I can click on the eyedropper, come up to saturation, go on to the oranges and push them a bit more, or pull them on down. But as I say, I'm leaning on my chin, hand on my chin, just having a little play. So I might do, the point of it is, is I might do half a dozen different variations of a shot before I know exactly what I want. So, uh, where am I? Here's a serious slammer. Um, and again, He's too hot in the head, and I've now, look, I've got 100% clarity and 100% texture. What I've found is, is sometimes I, will, um, I wouldn't have it that high, but I will often, under the texture, and still keep some clarity up there, because it sort of, it'll make the skin quite smooth and creamy. It looks like um, that, um, restaurateur, Bourdain, whatever. Anthony Bourdain, maybe a little bit. Um, I also use for a sneaky retouch. See, I've got sharpening pretty high. For a sneaky retouch, I'll use a lot of uh, noise, color reduction, sorry. Oh, come here, come here. I'll throw a fair bit of that on. And you can see it almost does a Gaussian blur on his skin. I'll just go back for a sec. Is it slow? I can see it, but maybe it's just me. I don't see it now in the morning. Um, you can see it. Huh? You can see it. You can see it. Yeah, okay. But you can see why. The joys of the 100 megapixel camera means I could come way back, spinning well a bit, I could come way back, shoot the whole scene, and then realistically I could crop right in and pull a um, double page spread as a headshot. Okay, so coming down, as you can see, I'll turn, I have, I just want to show you as I go what I'm doing. So then I'll come in closer. I'll keep some space at the top in case I need a, I shoot most shots with a potential to be a cover. So I leave top space a lot, which I think is good. And then I'll work different scenarios with the guy different angles. And over a time frame, it's, all these are probably over a, um, an hour's period or something like that. You would have been here for an hour or two. Were you here that day? You were, a couple of hours. Hour and a half. I'll just have a zoom in. It just takes a little bit of, normally it has all the um, 
The first thing I would normally do with a catalog, sorry, to be ADD and jump over the space, I will actually I might show you what I do. Just no, I, I, I select everything and then once I've loaded and I'll go up to library, I'm sure, and I'll go to previews and I'll say build one to one previews. And you can see up in the top left, it's going to crunch those away in the background. And I always save that. So coming back to my um, grid look, I don't shoot thousands and thousands, and now you'll see as I'll come back the setup. Let me get rid of this down the bottom. And you may recognize that man up there, the brother of Dirk. That is the brother of Dirk. Um, so Johnny's up there putting some highlight cheek on him, uh, some highlight on his cheek or skimming the wall. But I love it. I like all shoots to be a bit like a um, bad school play or something. And um, I'll often just pull the camera back so I can see what's going on. And, um, it's like a mini little theatre I've got there. So just pushing on my arm. Um, okay, so I did that first shot and thought, okay, I've got that shot. Next, I moved on, I moved on to a stronger shot, which is uh, another cover attempt. And I had a piece of uh, grid metal, that Rio grid, and I'd already cut a square out of it before for another person to hold up in front of their face. And that other person happened to be a terrorist guy called Mamdou Habib. And the irony was that I had the good guy holding the other piece that it came from. Anyway, so for this shot, and again, I'm doing all my own visualization and art direction as I go. Um, and hopefully you pre-plan what you want to have, preconceive the idea. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to use the ring flash, which has given it this little slightly shadowy ghosty around all the, um, the shadows around all the bars. And then I'll put a stronger direct head from above just on Roman. You can see the rim flashes in here. This one looks like it's soft or it hasn't popped yet. I think it could be a soft on that one. I'll just have a scroll through and find you a killer. So he looks a bit like a G.I. Joe action man. Um, and I know they are sharp, it just takes a bit of time to render. Again, I just want to quickly show you one which has got no treatment as it came out of the camera. Let's pick this one. And I'll come down to develop and I'll hit reset and put, get scared. So that's what's captured. I can look at my histogram up in the top right and see it's potentially a stop underexposed, but I'm a lover of a slightly underexposed digital file because I know all the info is there. Um, everything's there. So again, I will, would come up, I'll put, I would have, I'll do the same again. I will start with slam the clarity, open the shadow, I might go the other way with the highlights this time. Oh, no, I'll keep the highlights low. I'm going to push it right up and you can just see straight away it needs a little more magenta. It's a little bit too warm. I'd probably go cooler. And it doesn't take a hell of a lot to get where I want it to be. Um, obviously, as you open up the shadows, you can see all the dags and shit and uh, all the dags and fluff on the, excuse my language, 
uh, the Jags and Fluff, and I don't know what I'm doing out here. Coming back to G. So I've got two shots done. I work him a bit more on that. I've given that, I don't know, it's a little dirty across. Sometimes I'll find that the clarity will definitely make them grubby. It, like I can see his face is grubby. So I'm just going to select, highlight. I'm going to go shadows. I'm going to make a third of a stop just to give this a little bit of a clean in there. That's all. And you can see these Mickey Mouse reflection, uh, reflection shadows. I would probably definitely take those those two out later in post. Um, I mean, in I wouldn't do it in. I'd go. I would go Control, edit in like in Photoshop, and I'd take that to Photoshop. I'll just tell it to stop building these previews, and so it'll. Open that for me in a second in Photoshop. Normally she's flying, but I think because we're running through that other program, again, I will work quite a few variations on him. This time the front light is higher from camera right, but he's a handsome man for his 50, 60, 50 odd years of age, still rendering up. Oh, this is a uh, edited PSD file, so yeah, it's pretty goddamn large. So I will go F and I'll open. So you can see, there you go. I've taken out that stuff in the background. And there is it not out, but it's another color variation. You can see I've done, if you can see there, his body. Oops. See his shoulders. Oops. I used liquify a little bit. I probably didn't need to. This shot's a shocker. I don't think I handed this one in. I just found it too ordinary. Um, and he's a bit like a cowboy with his... Uh, Lariat of um, oh, well, okay, just going back out of the heat for a sec. Uh, then the fourth shot I would have done put him on the table. This is actually shooting through the ring light on a probably about a, a equivalent of about a 35mm lens, um, maybe even a 28mm lens. And in the foreground is the, the gimmick or whatever, the visual hook for him. Okay. I promise I've got lots of RAM. And again, so he's lit, frontally lit with a ring light, which is a light around the lens and the lens is poking through. I've just come back a little bit too much or zoomed out too wide, so I've picked some of it up like a porthole. And then from top camera left is the main light on his face. I'll just go back to the grid and you can see also I've got a strip here on the right hand side, which is just giving me that slight edge separation on that right hand side. Come on. Yeah, just one light here, one light here, and a ring light around the camera. And that's a pretty standard sort of setup. Um, what else did I shoot? Uh, and then just some looser ones of him. Oh, I must have looked. I've had a moment here. And then I've played with these silly shadows and stuff. Probably didn't put these in. 
because I'm not loving them. Oh, that's right. No, I did. I love this one. That's right. See, I like these. I like that space. And this is, you've got to remember, this is an ex-policeman border security guy that after this, he ended up um, signing up with um, Silver, what they call Silver Fox Management as a male model. I just quite like them. Anyway, so that's a sheet for Good Weekend, which is probably realistically a couple of hours. Um, I'm going to close that. I'm not going to back that up. Oh, here we go. So we've opened in, I just want to show you that image is opened in. Um, H, Apple, H to get rid of the grid. It's opened up in um, uh, Photoshop, and I don't know why it's so crooked, but I do, I'm a, quite a lover of Liquify. So I've gone up to Liquify, and I'll go up on the top right, I'll pick the, Where's my little thingy? Okay, I've picked the dragger and pusher. So if I want to make him, you know, I can I can give him bigger muscles. Obviously, if I drag his bicep across, it'll bend the steel bar, as you can see. So you've got to be careful in how you do stuff. But I will use it a little bit. Um, that's obviously way overdone. Uh, but I might use it if someone's nose has a big bend in it, or if I've got someone who's tubby and I want to give them a little bit of a cheek push in, or if his ears are a bit too sticky outy, or if I want to make them sticky outy. So you can have the best fun with this program, but my favorite one is called Bloat. Bloat. I mean, everyone's played with this, haven't they? You know, I know you're all sitting there going, oh my God, I'm certainly here to watch this. So that's probably my special cover technique. Okay, I'm out of there. Now, don't say it. Coming back for a, um, not go for it. Oh, Johnny, I worked out, I worked it out. I worked out where the, um, all you do is you hold down option, click on that file and show package contents. Okay, I've been having some fun. Let's have a look here. I might need my pal to help me turn off some of these numbers in a second. How do I turn off these for top menu? Go to uh, the dropper menu on the top, dropper, eye dropper. So eye dropper. Eye dropper, eye dropper, yep. Eye dropper, yep. Down the bottom. That one? Untick, always show color readouts. Perfect. Okay. So where will we start here? Um, View wise, John, I want to see when they're on the side, which is. Um, it's view. Sorry, a window. Workspace. The top. Perfect. Wait. And then it jumps back, only because I just. Don't go full screen. Just the top. Yeah, don't go full screen. All right, so during Club Corona times, I've been going through, I want to make it 
one is full screen image instead of a grid, which I do go off all of them. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And if I want to just go full screen view. Uh, uh, sorry, um, workspace yeah, across uh, simplify. Simplify? Yeah. Oh, okay, so um, I've been going through my archive and basically uh, I've been photographing lots of old tear sheets. Um, and I'll just go through a few some sheets with lovely old Heath Ledger, uh, and I'm shooting things in bits and pieces. That was a great shoot with Anthony Mundine in the garage. And I went to the music, local music shop and I just hired, I think they're called Car Lights, and they like $25 for four for the night or something. And I hired four of them and a smoke machine and just stacked them up behind him. Okay, so we'll get to some interesting stuff. But it's classic looking at all this. I've had such a diverse amount of work from annual reports. I don't know why I'm, everyone's going to turn their head on the side. I'm not on the happy ones. Let me come up here. Here we go. Let's go. Is it going to start with July 26? Oh, I spent years and years doing kid photography. Okay. So I've started copying lots of diaries. Lots of um, notebooks, and for years I've done, no, I've kept notebooks, and I just thought I'm going to put them all together and save them all as a digital file. Um, some of this stuff I've shown you before, but since I've seen it last, I've been cutting and collecting all this. Um, so I can throw stuff out. Oh my God, I didn't do the people cover. I did the picture down the bottom here of um, Alan Jones's racing car. These were just funny little jobs that I did when I first went to London in the 1984 fire. And I just kept little stuff as scrapbooks. Um, and I write, I always keep a record of story ideas. Um, oh, I'm sorry, ladies. It's, it's not inside sport. Uh, Black and White magazine. <laughs> Apple or can I want to rotate? Up view, rotate. What is it again? That's up here, isn't it? No, no. Top bar. Where that plus and the little round there, that one. It's not helping me. Oh, I'm offline, that's why. God knows why. Okay. It was it won't rotate while we're offline, will it? Click on it. But click on the image. I can't be right here though. It's been, are you alright? It's me. Shouldn't this say uh, there we go? There we go. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, okay, so again, I'm wasting everyone's time. Sorry, everyone. Um, so my work has been so varied from stop your car. Oh, now it's turned. So everything's just very slow because we're running through a few online. Oh, now next turn, fabulous. So these were uh, inside, not inside sport, I've done it again, Black and White magazine to the CEO of um, BHP. Um, I'm sorry that everything's on its side, but it just doesn't want to turn. So I better go to something that's straight. Early shoots of Malcolm Turnbull in my garage. 
Again, no Photoshop, you know, but color, major color adjustments, but I haven't actually replaced anything or taken anything out. I've just played with the colors that are there. Yep, they're all horizontal, I'm sorry, dude. I'm out of there. So I just want to quickly. Okay, let's go to something a little more interesting and more inspirational. As you know, my, are we on screen still? Yeah. Okay. As you know, I love many photographers. I don't know if we've mentioned this guy before, up the top, Gary Winogrand. So fantastic because he was so prolific shooting. I'll just show you some of his images. Have a look yourselves, but he was the guy who had to go out and shoot, shoot, shoot all the time. He really, I think he was probably on the spectrum. And um, when he died, he left behind, as you can see, six and a half thousand rolls of film, which he never pr print from. And I think three or four or two and a half thousand unprocessed rolls of film absolute blistering guy to look up. I hope everybody has watched um, Bill Cunningham, the super cute, he's dead now, I think Bill's carpet, Saturday. Uh, let me go on in a sec. Uh, Bill Cunningham was just, again, incredibly passionate man, loved his photography his entire life. And made nothing out of it, but such a great documentary to Google Bill Cunningham and watch his enthusiasm. Okay, another thing that inspired me too is, um, or if you really want to see a guy who is brutal with his camera, you've got to look at look up Magnum photographer Bruce Gelden, because Bruce, working in the streets in New York, is fantastic. This is, his arrogance is unbelievable. He shoots with a 21 mil on his Leica rangefinder and a handheld flash. So to see his style, watch this. So he's right in there and he says there's just a second before to the journalist who he, he says to the journalist a second before, get out of the way, get out of the way, because he's seen out of the corner of his eye and he doesn't give a crap about social niceties. He's just a hunter after the picture. So he's walking down, he sees this old lady. He's your classic New York Jew or Brooklyn Jew. He's hardcore, takes no, doesn't take no for an answer, and he's in everyone's face. I don't see where he becomes, where it becomes art though. You can see he's on the 21 mil lens. And he is bang. Little Vivitar 285 manual flash. But the, he, the fact that he believed so heavily in what he was doing was so worthwhile makes it worthwhile. Uh, we talked about Gaza. Um, John Mayowitz, I also, oh, that's 
Uh, and when you watch Gary Winogrand at work, this is Gary Winogrand, the man who died with six and a half. So when he died, he left behind 9,000 rolls of developed and undeveloped films. And then he shot all 35 films. So whatever 9,000 9, times 35 or six is, it's a crap load of photos. Anyway, Gary's approach is much softer than, um, it's still in your face, but it's much so His inspiration is, he'll just tell you, Walker Evans, who's great photographer, American 30s, and Robert Frank. He's much quieter, he's much more invisible. Oh, he's got the classic old donkey bag, I have that bag. Oh, and those pouches. Oh, flashback. So, this is Coney Island, America. Look at the photo in front of me. I mean, you can't, you can't make a bad photo. Americans are very quirky. He's a much more humble man than Gilden. But again, they're fearless in how they work. So, you'll see a couple coming. And he shot it before the guy even sort of sees. And then the man says, no, don't do that. And he goes, oh, fine, I've already, anyway, I've already got it. These are some of his images that are incredible. Absolute blistering guy to look up, Gary Winogrand. Just moving on for a sec. Bruce Davidson, another Magnum photographer. His series is so inspirational of um, the youth who were in the subways in the 60s and 50s. Incredible. Um, Robert Frank, super legend photographer. Um, Hungarian background. Oh, sorry, Swiss. I thought he was Hungarian. Um, he was born in Zurich. Another European Jew that came to America. Um, and uh, just was brutal in his work. His famous uh, images of um, the landing at Iwo Jima, isn't it? Not Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. Uh, legendary. Main oh, Normandy. Normandy. Normandy, you're right. So Normandy D-Day landing images are legendary because um, they were sent back by journalists and sadly there's only, I can't remember if it's 36 or how many images there are. Three. Is it only three frames? Only three frames. There you go, Johnny's help. Johnny knows this well. Three frames that survived, the rest were basically cooked in the dark room, over-processed and uh, unprintable. So you feel pretty good about putting your life on the line and then someone's privileged kid in the dark room in New York probably cooking your film. But yeah, Robert Frank, another guy you gotta love and another hungry European was old Ouija the um, press photographer, and some of his work is just incredible. Can you explain, can you run through the oh, yeah. Syrian cover? Yeah, sorry. Because yeah. <laughs> that's all that's about the leak. Okay, sorry, man, man, I'm out of there. The only reason was I can't open the friggin' um... It's talk, maybe it's talk of the cover. Okay, I'll get We've it. got a picture of the cover. Sorry, mate, guys. Meat lovers out there, goat lovers of Australia. So I wasn't here for that one because I wanted to know how did it Oh, okay, goat work. Sorry, goat guys. Curtis. Uh, Curtis, thank you, sir. Okay, just to only whack these in a. Um, let me just do a quick catalog for a sec. And I'll just whack them in. I won't, I'll just use the low res. Yeah. Okay, so what I would do if I'm doing a new catalogue, every shoot I do, I do a new catalogue. I go, new catalogue, 
and I'll call this, this is what I would call a good weekend. Curtis, his name was Sirian, but I'll call him Goat Man. Just, and I will put the date. And that, oops, what is zero? And then I will create that. Get with that. I'll back that up quickly. So I will open up. I always do it in the same style and I always open a new catalog for everything. I don't like, I don't normally use the import button. I'm a great lover of drag and drop. So for instance, I'm gonna put in the low res just because it's quick. I just drop them straight on top and I'll go import. Okay, it's just smashing those up at the moment. And I've got to see what I've got here. Because I've got two. Oh, I remember why. I did the first version and I thought, no, I should do a lighter version. So there's always going to be two of every image. Um, I just did a lighter version. So I'll start with, where does go there? I can start with any of these. Just didn't come like that. Oh, there's a video too, which I've got just up there, but I'll show you in a sec. So basically, I'm, for this image, I'll just look at this because it's quite bright, and I'll go F, full screen. So I got a call from Good Weekend magazine to say um, we're doing a profile on a football player with. Um, and he's going to have meat uh, because he's a big meat lover, basically. So I've gone good. Yep, I'm keen. Um, we and they said, oh, we'll probably get some meat. Blah blah. And I'm a great one on. If I get all the magazine do everything, I'll, they were talking at first about him holding a couple of steaks and we'd get some. And I went, nah. I'm the, and I went online and I looked up whole goat because I would have liked to have got a piggy, but they were a lot more expensive. So goat is a much cheaper talent than piggy. Anyway, so I've gone and ordered a, it was an 18 kilo goat. It was delivered by, and it's halal. It was delivered by this Bangladeshi man who came with his uh, son. Um, had the goat lying across the back seat in uh, black plastic bags. Uh, brought the goat upstairs. I lay it on this table that I'm laying on here. Um, and that was it. Next thing, Curtis arrived. He's the football player. Um, is he down there? I can't remember. I think he, I uh, can't remember. Is he down there, player? Do you know? I'm Victorian. Huh? I'm Victorian. I oh, am yeah, Victorian, of course. No, it doesn't matter where he's. But he's a lovely guy. Anyway, so he's come and I have said to him, so first of all, the magazine have said to me, I oh, would love to get, um, uh, would love to get him possibly with his shirt off, but we've asked him and he said no on the phone and blah, blah. So literally, he's arrived, I've shown him the meat, we've had a chat. I've said, buddy, take your shirt off. Uh, get Michelle, who works, helps me. Lovely lady, Michelle Dubay. Michelle will give you a bit of a lube up and just put a bit of oil or silicone stuff on his body. I'm a bit disappointed he had his tight footy shorts. I cropped in the end, but I also noticed his little, he's a little bit, a little bit, I don't want to point that out there. He's tummy tum tum tum, but he was a little bit uh, tummy tum tum tubby um, or loose. So in the final, when I actually did the high res of that, that's where I used a bit of Photoshop. See, I what I did is just bought that line of his pants across there because it's just. It's the small details that he'll go, oh my God, my gut. 
and it does look, he didn't know that, but it looks so much better when you do do that. So, okay, now to light this photo, I also used a ring flash around the camera. You can see there's a bright, one single highlight in the middle of his eye. That is a circular flash around the camera called ring light, ring flash. And then from camera left, I've got a three footer, which is high, probably a bit too high because it's just given a bit of a shadow here from there as it's come down. And then I've got a open head on the background. They're, no, they haven't got um, strips, they're just two open wide grids because I've got a video here um, and you can see in the video, I'll get it for you in 10 seconds or a bit more. But the idea was um, the anyway, the guy from the magazine, he came the first time the editor of the mag, uh, the art director of the magazine's ever come. So basically, Curtis is shy, so I ease him into it. I'll go through a few variations, different shots, turn, turn your body this way, turn your body that way. As you can see, yes, three footer from the left and an open head kicking in on the right. And the whole, he's shiny and all the meat's lit up well is mostly because of the ring flash. It just gives you the definition. You can see the trodden on, on his arm, sprint. But it gives you all the definition in here on the meat and everything. And you can see a little spot in the eye. And the reason I use the ring flash is one, it does give me a cool edgy thing on the um, background, like a shadow edge, but it also means I can dial as bright as it is or as low, as dark as it is, the ring flash, I can control my shadow my um, ratio from heavy blacks to more open blacks because I just put a little bit of ring flash in there. And I think when I, I pushed him in a little bit here too on um, some of the heroes, I might just have a quick look in a second and find the hero as well. So there wasn't heaps and heaps we could do with this. I was looking for a double pager and for a potential cover. So I worked a few different angles. Some I think were deemed a bit too gory, so they probably didn't use them. But you can see how, um, this is just a low res, but he had very good skin, I remember that. And he, they all, he was so up for it. Uh, this is where, instead of me shooting through the ring light, I had the ring light and I pulled my, I left the ring light on the stand and I just pulled my camera out from the middle of it. And it's obviously on my left because it's throwing the shadow up to the right. And you can see this time my camera is to the left of the light, so the shadows come up from the right. And you're probably thinking, wow, sloppy, you've got all the stands and shit. Yeah, because um, I didn't have an assistant to help me that day, I don't know why I didn't have a helper. No, because I think they were, my best friend helper, I think was on holidays with his family, actually they were. Um, I know that I'm, I can just crop in a little bit if I have to, or I can fix it, but sometimes I don't mind just having the peripheral crap in the edges, I don't. I'm not big on the on the yellow colour or the green, but um, yeah, if, oh, apples. Are, if I went um, to black and white, that's fine. So 
the next thing I went to G is the next shot. I thought, oh, we need another shot. So I worked that a bit. Time to crunch up his tummy, hunch over, mimic my body. No, I didn't say that. Um, so I've sort of got to the end of that thinking, oh, what else can I do? And then I dragged out, oh, it comes, oh, that's right. I asked Michelle, a makeup lady, who's very sweet. I said, go for it, Michelle. You mix, make some fake blood and we'll put it on. Sadly, her fake blood was a little bit too orange. I can change and fix that in post, but it also, it tended to look like makeup smeared, so it didn't quite work. Um, but because she's, I like everyone to put their input in and see if it does work. Um, next, I came down to, I did, yeah, see so these just don't work as a close up. They're not graded properly, but they're just boring. And um, yeah, there's nothing in there really. You can see again the ring light, the circle. You can see that he needs to pluck his ears, see I? Think, Look at those ears growing, oh my God. Um, then the last, so yeah, we did these. I just think his shoulders were a bit too rounded. He hadn't, doesn't have the wider shoulders. And sometimes they don't look wide because they've got such bull neck muscles as well. But um, I didn't mind some on the angle. They're a little bit boring though. I really wanted, oh, so then I went, okay. Oh, I might just get him to hang the meat up because I've got a bar in the studio. I went downstairs and raided my wife's hanging basket and took the S hook off her plant and a bit of old rope and we've slung it over the thing. And then we've just worked some angles and had a play with that. And then I, these didn't quite work because you can see the angle of the rope's not quite right. And then I tried a few other things. The, on the background are just two on the left. Oops. On the left and right are just two open flashes for the, on quite a low power just to give me a bit of an edge. That was probably a little bit more. But so we'll keep playing for a sec. And I didn't mind where these were going. But again, I would have been happier had I made the um, bar higher. I just didn't, A, have time or the space on the day. I just want to quickly go to, before we... Before we yeah, yeah, yeah. So I might just whack these in. These are high res, I just want to see. See, Lightroom was closed then, and all I did was drop the high res file onto the closed icon and then opened, asking me, do I want an import? Maybe, okay. What am I doing? Tab. And I didn't take them all. See, I thought I was a smiling hands. So I'll drop them onto that. That's where I normally drop them. Go import. Okay, so I'm going to go. Oops, so, so I'll just go to here and see. Okay, remember. I, I'll make this big. I'll go F for full scope. Okay, you can see his pants are higher. I've probably pushed his butt in a little bit. I might have put 
push his thigh up a little bit. I've definitely given him a little bit more humpy dumpy on his arm. I'm actually not even sure if these are other high reps. Eye. Hang on. Eye. Inflammation. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't pushed that in a lot at all. I don't think these are the actual high reses I sent over. Ah, no, it is. This I remember this one is. Okay, I'll tell you why. Let me just mark that with a B for a quick collection. And I'll just go to the collection. So I think that's going to be a tip, I bet you. Okay, so I want to just compare these to we'll go C to compare. And I'm pretty... No, they're not the same image. Aren't they? Anyway, what the point of it was, I see on this one, I extended in Photoshop it finished across here, probably, you know, uh, yeah, across here, and I've extended, taken some rope, and just cloned it in to extend it so they had more space if they were going to use it for a potential cover or something. But again, I think it was probably too gory, um, and uh, they didn't. And, which is fine. I'm sure these aren't the, uh, aren't the right high res. But yeah, I, sometimes if I go, oh, I need more top space, I might clone something and add a little bit of in there or stretch it. So other, sorry guys. So that's the go guy story. And just very quickly, I might just, oh, this is classic. The other day I was doing a preview for the lovely sisters of charity helping them out. And I was at a church in Concord in West Sydney and they had the first new nun in 20 odd years. Anyway, I walked around the back of the church because the nun show was happening in the front and there's a little chapel at the back it was this fantastic scene with these just brilliant colorways. And as John said, it looks almost lit of this footy player guy praying to the big fella. And I just thought it was sensational. What have I done here? Here we go. Oh, that's right, because I'm in preview. Oh, we might open it up to questions. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought that was awesome. Of course, all questions are welcome. Next weekend's cover of The Good Weekend will be a story about these lovely lady who John worked with, um, Cameron Bloom, and his wife who had an amazing accident. Okay, so this is when we were shooting. She had an amazing accident and became a paraplegic, uh, quadriplegic. Yeah. She's paralyzed from the armpits down, basically. That's plus up. That's her husband Sam, and that's uh, Cam, and she's Sam, and two of their three kids. They live in um, up in Avalon, and. It's a powerful story. It's about the bird magpie penguin that came to save their life. Um, anyway, this is some uh, behind the scenes. I'm shooting here just with the daylight. We've got a just an old bit of polyboard that was at the house as a reflector. I have got the Pro Photo trigger on, but it's not actually flashing. And I'm on the Hasselblad uh, X1D Mark II with a that's with a 90 mil lens, 
And it's just like a giant um, point and shoot mirror camera. I only love it especially because the files are so lovely. And so behind me is Sam's, this is Sam, her husband, Cam, who's a photographer. Now, as lovely as Cam is, I don't think anyone ever said to Cam, just give people space, because <laughs> he was right there on my back. He was on my back, baby. Anyway, um, I would too. I would look after my wife if, if she'd been in that horrific, horrific uh, injuries. Okay, let's open some questions. If there's anyone still asleep, awake. Is anyone awake? No, they've all gone to sleep, haven't they? I'll have to unmute. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Anyone uh, got any questions they want to ask um, Tim about the uh, Good Weekend magazines or whatever? Or anything? Oh, no. Maybe anything. Yeah, I can do anything. Not all good? I'm sure Helen must have a... No, it's all good, mate. I'll let it go. <laughs> Helen's... You're welcome. I'm just saying, yeah. I deliver my photos using a uh, digital pigeon to my clients. I find it's a cracker of a program for uploading. Is that like a file sharing site? Yeah. It's so good. Oh, here we go. Low res. So, for instance, this is what I would have said good weekend. A link to this. This is color gray. Oh, that's just the business man. Oh, then there's the high res of Curtis. But yes, it's a it's a great oh here we've got right and low res. So that's how I'll sell stuff out, send stuff out, and then um, the people will let me know. Oh, that was a favor for Someone doing there. Oh, look at this. This is so cute. Did you see these? Um, Dirk? I uh, don't think I did. You know, that's the little clone, the eyebrow, the junior eyebrow, doing his um, best performance as Atticus Finch. But, oh, so he so inspired me. I've got to show you this one, just for a sec. <laughs> I've got that coming down. I can probably play it here. Here we go. To Kill a Mockingbird. So this is Charlie Wallace, John's son. I hope it's nothing incriminating in here. But he inspired me, so I did a bit of a... I just look online to make a little memory thing. I love a PowerPoint too. So I've just gone on the internet, dragged off a few pictures, which are about the scene that he was performing. That was his audition for performing school. And so I just wanted to pad it out with some images and hopefully he'll hang on to it or you won't, but it's a good memory. And I, I don't know why I'm going around and around. Uh, okay, so here's young Atticus wearing my dad's shoes that hadn't been worn for 45 years, sitting at a big table, and Johnny and I dragged up from the kitchen before he did his performance, which was so good. And bearing in mind, 10 or 11? 10, 10, 11, 12 now, 11. Just fantastic. Calm but confident, secretly. Huh? You're good. Oh, he's brilliant kid. Brilliant. So it was, I only just shot these for fun with a little point and shoot while he was doing his quick thing. And then I just made it into a memory 
for his uh, mum and dad. As everyone would do. These were just, just lovely. Which reminds me. Oh, and so when he left, Sound like he's an actor, main actor. Yes, when uh, young De Niro left, he left me a note saying um, thanks from Atticus. So it made me go downstairs, get this old suitcase I've got, and my dad's shoes, and the note that Charlie had written, and just make a little still life. And it probably was all over in half an hour or an hour, but it's means something special to me. And uh, and then obviously I just stuck my hand in a box and I had a big roll of 70 mil film that everyone has lying around. And I thought, oh, you just put the torch behind that or a light behind that and have some shadows to make it. That's a nice memory. And that's it. There's my dad's shoes and my note from Charlie. And I even have my coffee stain on the paper put there. Yeah, nice. I'm quite uh, nostalgic uh, and sentimental, I think. I, I like I like the story. I like the story that those shoes were bought in Milan by my dad in the 50s and Charlie wore them. <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. Anyway, so everybody's um, anyone, anyone, who's got any, has anyone um, been doing any good projects apart from Dirk, who's been doing some great stuff at the hospital, which is important, and collecting ephemera, which is even more important, hey Dirkie? We love ephemera. We love it. We love crap. Memory crap. I love it. it. Talking of memory crap, I don't know if I'm on video or on screen. I'm on video, but I'm on screen. Today I was just, I, I mean, before you came over, I was having a wonderfully self-indulgent um, uh, time. And I found this fantastic story about, and it's politically incorrect, I guess, but it's a true story. Uh, this is the story of James, his real name was Michael. He was a male prostitute on the streets of London. He'd been in the business for 11 years, longer than most. Here he talks to a lady I used to work a lot with, a Dutch journalist, Ava Merlinger, about life in the jungle. Gay Confessions of James the Hooker. Now, we did this as a speaking piece, um, and I met James, who was really Michael, um, over a happy cigarette, maybe years and years ago, and um, he told me that he'd been a male prostitute, blah, blah, blah. I'm just looking at some of the quotes, and I've got all the photos still, but I haven't seen that text for years. It says, if I think I can lift thousand pounds off a punter, then I'll get it off him. I was a junior hairdresser. This man offered me $20. My God, I just earned my wages in 10 minutes. I went crazy. Um, anybody can get laid in London every two minutes. You just walk down the street. Arabs and Americans are my best customers, but I don't take credit cards. I mean, they're just some priceless old lines here. Um, and then, anyway, Michael's story was brilliant. I remember exactly. He was. It was a, his boyfriend was the managing director of work perfumes, I remember, and had no idea that Michael was having an alternate life. Um, anyway, I remember it's how it started. It said, my parents were travellers, so he was a gypsy background, and he introduced me to some gypsies that I got access to, which I couldn't have otherwise. Uh, my parents were travellers and I was born in a caravan on the roadside, somewhere in Chertsey. My father was a scrap metal dealer. It moved from place to place. This is how we lived until I was 11 years old. I was just so indulgent having these fantastic stories to go with, you know, the photos which I still have. And I just keep on 
saying to people, it's not just about taking a photo, it's about collecting all the information that goes with it, you know. Gosh. How well indulgent. Anyway, John and I are going to bid you all farewell. And um, I, don't think I don't think there's anyone else. Look in there. You look in that hole. I don't think there's anyone else awake. Helen, I'm glad to hear your chuckle. <laughs> yeah, I'm still awake. <laughs> Good girl. But I must say, um, sorry, Professor. I must say that it's so good. Has Dirk, have you shown anyone any of the stuff you've been doing yet? Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. And you haven't been, have you? Where are you at with the project at the school? Uh, that project's finished. We're ready to go. I just can't um, have an exhibition at the moment. The kids can't. Everyone's in lockdown, you know, so. So are you, are you putting all that work together? Are you, are, are you just putting it literally in a box and waiting until there's better times coming? Pretty to much. To do a, yep. We've got a so, Will you do grading and all the playing with the files for the kids and stuff? I will, yeah. I'll tweak all the files. We've got a lot of stories from the kids as well, just from their time in lockdown. And, uh, and are those stories written stories or audio stories? Written, Both. Written stories. Written? Yeah. Have you... Do you reckon they And is the kids all from one school or several schools? Uh, they're all just from one school. There's 900 kids in the school, but we only had 50 kids in this project, so. Remind me the lady's first name again, sorry. Fiona. Fiona, thank you. I'm just wondering whether Fiona would be, and you should get a microphone and just get them also to read their stories. That's a great idea. Or do you, or, is, or you think you're just gonna, are the stories typed or handwritten or a combo? Oh, a bit of both. A bit of both. Um, handwritten is always so lovely too. Yeah. And what we did also was we got the kids in the whole school, so 900 kids, just to write down wow. a couple of words on a bit of paper about what remote learning and that meant to them. So we've got like hundreds and hundreds of these little pieces of paper with just two or three words from the kids. Wow, you almost need you almost need to when I when you say that, I just think of count because I'm OCD ish, not so much anymore. Um, counting all the words, not all the words. Sorry, seeing the words that are used the most, i.e., lonely or pandemic, and we might have pandemic, and then times. 237 it's used i don't know i just can see it as such a great strong graphic too because often you've got to distill all the information down to just basic i remember someone once said to me they look through my portfolio or whether it was someone else's portfolio and i've just inherited the story but the fact that you can but it went like this. You're looking through someone's portfolio and you go, oh, beautiful work, beautiful work. Oh, that's a bit of a sh shitty picture. The moment you go shitty picture, the three beautiful works beforehand are wiped and you're back at zero again. Mm. And I'm just, it's been a personal crime of mine not to be a much tighter editor and Every time I do see a cover or a picture I've done, I go, oh, why'd they pick that one? What I'm really saying is, is, duh, why'd you put that one in there for them to pick? But um, I did just very quickly. Just one thing on the Zoom page. Yeah. This is too blurry. No. No? Oh. How close can we zoom in on when they're coming down the camera a bit? Or is that ish? That's okay. So I found, which I hadn't seen 
for years because they haven't sent a portfolio out. Some portfolios I got made in the day when you had leather, beautiful portfolios. And even with my name embossed on the bottom, at ridiculous cost. Anyway, this one I think is a, a portraity one that <coughs> the, a di the diver, I've got the computer in there. He was taken by, a, <laughs> he was that Clarence diver, Paul de Gelder. Paul de Gelder, he, which is a terrible name because he, I think he did lose one testicle. So de Gelder is quite fitting. Anyway, he had a carbon leg and hand, and I swear to God, he had his girlfriend there. This was shot down at North Sydney, and I shot that again. Three foot octa. I can see I had realistically too high because he's too sockety, and I can lighten those now. I was done when I did that. And I had a so one light here, and I had just here behind him. I like doing a spotty on here because I like the graphic of that. Now, what I was going to say is his girlfriend came and she wouldn't take his hand, the hands off him because it was passion. It's a bit freaky, actually. Um, Mr. Mundine, who was always very nice to me and he's a cracker in front of the camera. Jeremy Sims. Uh, Harry Kuehl, actually a good weekend cover shot in Istanbul. They flew me to Istanbul. We got a free, I went with a journalist to Istanbul for, for five days and probably an hour and a half with Harry Kuehl. Um, more mundane. I just see what else I've got in here. Oh, crap, a story, this guy, amazing. He's actually learning photography and I've given him a couple of lessons. Um, his stage name is DJ Hooky. His name is, it'll come to me and I'm just having the same moment. It'll come to me. Anyway, he went to Newington School, a private school. In his last year of school, he contracted meningitis and lost his arms and legs. He's now does TED Talks. DJ Hooky, oh shit, come on. Come on, Brain, I have to Google and remember. He only lives up the road in Canada. Um, anyway, he's done TED Talks. Just a delightful guy, absolute crap. There's so many portraits. Oh, that's a cracker of uh, Happy Tiny. Happy Tiny. Look at him. Beautiful. You all missed that? Okay, now coming right ahead. So these, this is just really a portrait book. And when I look at it now, I think, no wonder I've advertised with people didn't know what to do with me. That was awesome. Uh, Bart Cummings in his office. And because he was so, such a stiffy, I thought, I'll oh, just let him be a stiffy. And he was fantastic. That was another from that shoot with the John Bell who wore the um, hat. And as you can see, we did a few variations of the hat. And that's the one they actually used for the cover. Okay, and moving right along. Done deal. We're all good. Okay. So I think. Oh. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time, Jim. From John. <laughs> Sorry about that bloody Lightroom shit. One day we'll make this work really well and everyone will go, oh my God, that was professional. <laughs> so until then, enjoy the circus. It is fun this way. <laughs> It is. It's, it's organic. It's family. It's much more fun. I don't want to turn the camera around. I want to hold, hang on. I just want to see here we go. Hang on. So you watch what John's got. See, go from one thing to the other. He's like, 
He goes from there, and then he's off to the buttons, and then he's there, and then he's ticking with his brother, and then he's... Oops. <laughs> Over some cables, I think. I just um, unlived it from Facebook. Maybe that's done it. Anyway, all good. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you to everyone. That was awesome. Yeah. Are well, you back? We're just saying. We're back again. Oh, we're back Hello, goodbye. <laughs> and um, sharing the screen with John Cussie's super friend. That's probably what's happened. <laughs> Thanks, we, saw, we thought we you must have been camera shy. <laughs> yeah, we were all, we were all camera shy, but John likes being camera shy. He does. He, he I know he's doing it on purpose, but he's just blaming the equipment. All right, everybody, sleep well. A river Thank John. you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk, very much. It was wonderful. No worries. Thanks, Helen. <laughs> See you, mate.